Hey guys, Repairman here to repair your builds. And so now I'm going to give you something a little different, something a little out of the norm that I don't usually do. A top 10 builds video. No demos, sorry, no bit demos in this video, but I will be showing 10 frames, why I think they're the best, and showing the builds. Of course, I've been, as you see, I have a lot of Warframes. I believe it's like 54 different Warframes, duplicates of some, and some that still have to play around with, make, do a secondary build and stuff. But a lot of frames I have duplicates of for different purposes to do different things that you can't do with them formatted the way they are, so I had to form them differently. All right, so let's get into it. Uh, and this isn't in any particular order. I just kind of threw together a list and then just kind of slowly over time shortened it up. Uh, and some I had to replace because Chroma was on my top 10 list. That one I'm really going to have to think long and hard about and maybe come back to it. But I'm sad, like very, very sad to say Chroma is no longer on my top 10 list at the moment. Um, mainly because his tank was just crazy phenomenal and it just got crazy neutered. It used to have, uh, with my build anyways, it had 32,000 effective HP when you take the armor and health into account. If you get anything more than that, shoot me a, a screenshot of the build. I'll run it through my calculator and see if it used to or does get anything around that line. Um, but highly doubtful. I played around, I got spreadsheet, I, Chroma was my favorite frame, even though it wasn't my most used frame, it was my very favorite. So that's probably yet another reason why I'm so peeved and off-put by this nerf. Um, going from 32,000 effective HP to 6. That's substantial amount of reduction. Crazy reduction. And I believe I had like 12 for 14, one of those two, I can't recall which two. And now I have 2,000 armor on that build. And that's part of one, that's the big reason why the effective HP is so reduced, so hard. But its replacement is phenomenal. So replacing that list, the next runner up that was to be pushed up to the top 10 list, is Oberon. Oberon is phenomenal. If you've seen my other video, Oberon Prime, or Oberon, with Arcane Energize, can pop out 150 health per second to the entire team. So not only is it crazy tanky just on its own, but it helps the entire team be crazy tanky as well. Even squishy frames are now tanky frames. I mean, it's phenomenal because you're also adding in there a hundred or seven hundred and fifty armor, not a percentage, solid seven hundred fifty added on top of whatever they have. They have twenty-five. Now they have seven hundred and seventy-five armor just stacks it right on top. An addition, not a multiplication. Phenomenal. Game changer. And with that regen, they're super tangy. Even if they don't have a lot of health, which it does help to have at least a health mod if you want to make them really tanky, eat those squishy frames with an Oberon on the team. And even if you do die, you got Phoenix Renewal, bring you right back to dead just like Wukong. Phenomenal. Um, boost that up, of course. Even what brings it up beyond... 299 is energy conversion and growling power. You get both procs before you cast a renewal. Boom. Done. Alright. Next on the list. You know it. You can guess it. The very My very absolute favorite frame of them all. Mag. Just end all be all. The map nuker to end all map nukers. Strips armor. Decimate shields. Maps. Destroyed. So with this, we have max efficiency, some serious range, good strength, and not a phenomenal amount of duration, but we use prime continuity to offset transient fortitude and fleeting expertise. It's critical to have a rank 4 fleeting expertise because you have 10% more duration, and there's no upside to having that max out fleeting expertise because there's no channeling abilities on mag. These are all single cast 
only time you want a max fleeting expertise on mag is if you have a either you're not using st streamline or we're using a blind rage to help offset some of that uh, negative duration negative efficiency now if you're going against infested you're going to want to yank probably going to want to yank off prime continuity so you can do more range more or more strength um, or you might want to leave it on if you want to still cast magnetize because your polarize is totally ineffective against majority of the infested because it only affects units that have armor and units that have shield it'll cause damage to them if they have one of those two if they don't it will do nothing zero no nothing no damage no buff no nothing so yeah something to think about you might or might not want to use that depending on the mission if you're going to have something hard target might show up like stalker you might worry about that showing up you might still want to hang on to that if you're going to real high level infested you might still want to keep prime continuity just because you can still cast the magnetize to one hold them in place and amp up the projectile damage you shoot into there it's a no-brainer now other builds of course with mag armor stripper build go and just cast that strips the whole map and then some of their armor phenomenal damage against shields and a boss killer build with a little bit of survivability if you're going against uh, like the atlas boss the one before archwing the uh, behemoth juggernaut phenomenal all right and next on the list we have mirage mirage of course we just got the mirage prime doesn't take a lot of forma compared to what it used to the regular version will take about seven forma for this same build and the prime only takes four so with this build, it doesn't matter what player, or what format, uh, polarity you have in the X, the Aurora, because it fits no matter what you throw in there. That's the key, because if you want to go pro leagues, you don't want to have. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't use that Aurora because it doesn't match. We're going pro league on this, so you got to format, just get it over, yank it off like a band aid. You know, if you're short on forma do it later get all your formas your frames decked out then double back and form them so you can have the aurora aurora not match but anyways with this we're mainly going for um strength and duration because we're counting on that zeneric lens that's very critical and a key to have activated so go downstairs go activate that before you run it get that five energy per second even with low efficiency no prime flow you're able to maintain it with the with that running. Now, for me, I have mult two grace. So for survivability, I throw on vitality, and because grace is percentage based, that complements that very nicely. Two of them gives you phenomenal survivability, especially with the all mirrors reducing the chance of them hitting you too. Really nice to have. And because you have lots of duration, you're able to keep the ability running for a long period of time. No range really, so you're not gonna really buff your teammates or anything. This isn't for that. This is for the just tanky, crazy damage kind of build. And just in case you guys are curious, uh, I don't run these other ones quite as often. As you don't have, don't even have arcanes on them. Um, what is the difference? Less health. And, oh, I have energy conversion on this one. Ah, yeah, that's the difference. Yeah, that one's got energy conversion. Yeah, because it's this one's cast every single minute, yeah, I opt to go for intensify normally. You get, yeah, you get, uh, oh, actually, no, actually, I have that on both frames, because the power strength is 299 on both. I have both of them. Now, I don't have it on my main build instead of intensify. You're probably wondering, hey, that's another 20% more power strength. Yeah, but you're not always getting energy orbs. So you're losing 50% and gaining only 20% sometimes. So I'd rather have the guaranteed 30% because it's a, you have to cast every single minute two different abilities, your first and your third. So that's two energy orbs every 30 or uh, every 60 seconds or so. So not really worth it in my eyes for my main build. You screw around some of these other builds, yeah, I'll do that. And this one has absolute crazy damage. Not as much duration. Not going to last a phenomenal amount of time, but 
you want to do just crazy damage in a short amount of time, this is the one. Don't run those very often, almost never, but that's then just in case you were curious. Sorry, this is probably going to be a lengthy video, but we got 10 frames to cover in a video, so it's a good bit. So next on the list, but not it particularly in this order, of course, though, is Banshee or Banshee Prime. Banshee got reworked, so its ability works a little differently, uh, but build is roughly similar. Now, the uh, duration is not a factor in its ultimate. If you're using Resonating Quake, keep that in mind. If you're using Resonating Quake, um, then duration, uh, you don't want to, you don't really need to worry about that. Uh, if you don't have the augment on, then you definitely do need to worry about it, unless you have the arcane helmet, which I got the arcane helmet on. Uh, yep. So got lots of range, lots of strength, some decent efficiency and prime flow. So I have a buffer of energy, and when I run out of energy, I energize, run around, pick some orbs up, boom full back up again very nice um, not sure if I, f I know I play around with the sonar next range yeah playing around with that I had two sonar builds um, don't this one don't quote me on that I don't know if this is the end-all be-all pro league sonar build. It's been a while since I played around with this. I had two and I know I actually did auto whatever and it removed all my mods on the third config which I was testing and comparing the two sonar builds on config B and C to see which one was better at that time. So yeah but if you don't have something this is something to go off of. If you got something, a better sonar build, shoot the uh, screenshot of the build in the comments below or something. Uh, post stats and stuff and uh, I'm definitely open for that. Uh, maybe at some point I'll revisit this and try and rework it myself if no one posts anything. Alright, on to the next frame. Ember. As you see probably one of my other videos, it's been reworked. Now, even though it's been reworked crazy less range when it's at max and more damage energy drains more critical uh, or dub cuts in half or doubles I mean it's still a phenomenal top 10 frame does exterminates like nobody's business even still you just gotta rework it you gotta get that range all the way up you gotta get 280% range your range isn't up there you're gonna pale in comparison to any other top tier ember you bring your an ember with higher strength lower range I guarantee you, we go and exterminate, run through the mission, this ember will dominate. Uh, and grind power gets your strength up even more. Energize brings up even more. And uh, you have max efficiency, prime continuity to offset the transient fortitude and fleeting expertise so that that way your energy drain per second isn't that well uh, hit on that. Because the energy drain per second are, is based on both duration and efficiency because it is a channeling ability. So you do want that flavor expertise to be absolutely maxed. And all the other mods absolutely maxed as well. All right, on to the next one, Equinox. So Equinox is phenomenal. There's all kinds of phenomenal things you can do with Equinox. I'm actually trying to get uh, a second Equinox going to do some more crazy stuff, uh, more than what I have up these three here. Um, got some other ideas, I won't ruin the spoiler and tell you guys quite yet what I have in mind, but hopefully RNG is nice to me and gives me that last piece. I think it's like a night blueprint or something like that. I've been, I've literally run that mission like 50 times. It's ridiculous. I got the first one in a lot less time. Uh, yeah. Anyways, this one is absolutely, you have to have energy, uh, energize one, if not two sets to make this work because it drains energy quite vigorously and to keep the energy flow, energy up, you need energize. This is a very pro league build here. If you uh, don't have energize, see my other Equinox video, um, it has the one without the arcanes and it has a lot more efficiency. Um, to keep that running and no prime flow because prime flow is just a buffer for the energize so when you're not running around like a madman 
you got energy to go and then as soon as you get low you just run around pick up orbs boom it's right back up and radar to see where enemies are so you can blast them with your ultimate and be in the most centralized location the center mass of the enemies all right next one nix now nix used to be one of my most hated friends i'm like oh that thing's a piece of shit i don't like it it's horrible forget nix nix is junk garbage but things changed as soon as i got a couple of years back when i actually said you know if i, I haven't played around with nix might as well get to know him know her and um look around the abilities figure get really get to know it a hundred percent so i can make a build for it even though i didn't like it and then once i did get to know it that <laughs> quickly changed i liked it particularly because of assimilate you can move around you're in Invincible, completely invincible. Nothing can damage you. Your own weapons, other people's weapons, enemies, the works, nothing can hit you. Only thing you're weak against is nullifiers. The real thing you gotta be careful of with this build is if you're going against infested and grenier, great, use this build. If you're going against the void or you're going in uh, a corpus mission, then you don't want to go with a range. You probably want to throw on narrow-minded, have no range mods whatsoever, um, so that way you have no range, because then your bubble's going to be real tiny. Yeah, you won't be able to protect the cryopod or allies with that build as you can with this build, but when those nullifiers get up on you, they're not going to instantly turn off your, um, your assimilate. And this is phenomenal. This is the main reason also why this is one of my top favorite frames is because it's one and only frame where you can use self-damage weapons with no repercussions whatsoever. Zero repercussions. You might say, hey, whoa, whoa repairman, there's Wukong and there's Valkyr. Those are invincible frames. And there's some other frames that have some slight invincibility. They don't compare. Particularly because the let's go through them one by one. So you got Valkyr, invincible frame, phenomenal, great for certain things. But you cannot use your primary, can't use your secondary. You technically can't use your melee weapon, like say Xenostar, throw a disc out, even though you're doing melee attack. You're just using the mods from your melee. So that's particularly why not Valkyr and why it's better in Valkyrie. Now you're saying, oh, well, Wukong, Wukong, you can use your weapons, you can do all this kind of stuff. Yes, you can, but there's a repercussion. Whenever you go and do self-damage, you, of course, die and come back to life instantly. So it might seem, oh yeah, there's no repercussion, but every time you revive, you get less and less health regen each time, which with the build, that I generally go with rage and whatnot to keep it maintained and always be able to, almost always be able to come back from the dead, you're gonna, that's gonna just dwindle lower and lower. And eventually at some point, you're just gonna die so quickly, so often that your energy is gonna run out and you're gonna die. Especially with self damage weapons, or mainly with self damage weapons or a bad build. So now with Nyx, you have no such worries. You blast yourself in the face with the lens all day long, no repercussion whatsoever. You can stand there, and the added benefit, you actually attract the enemies to you, which is helpful to protect cryopod, not only because they can't go and shoot at the cryopod because of the range, but allies and, uh, and um, specters, uh, defense targets, you protect excavators, a lot of different tasks you can use this for to protect things. And very nice. Of course though, I don't use them quite as often, but here is a uh, Chaos Sphere build. Keep in mind that Chaos Sphere does cut the range in half. Uh, and it shrinks over time, but so you can use it, or you can yank that off and have that just chaos even further. It's up to you, depending on the mission, especially if you have a really, really big mission, you might want to yank that off if you're trying to do crowd control. And then there's mind control. You're doing mind control, you want to do crazy damage. So you got high strength, high duration, and mind freak, which is also uh, even more damage. So when you mind control something, 
think about the stalker, for instance. Yeah, the duration at which you can mind control a stalker is going to be diminished greatly, but you can still do it. And when you do, he will do even more damage. Think about how much damage he does already, and then amping that up by a crazy amount. <laughs> yeah, that'd be nice. Or heavy gunners or whatever else. The particular one where I used this mostly was when the we had the Razorback mission. We mind control the Bursas um, and have them attack the Razorback rather than have to hack them, kill them, and then hack them. You just bypass that all together. Just take them over right from the start. So that's several reasons why Nyx is on the top ten list. And then you have Gara. I have two different Garas for different purposes, and both are reasons for it to be up on the top ten list. Really nice survivability, uh, not only for you, but for allies. You're able to cast your uh, glass shield around yourself, cutting the damage down by 90%, and you can cast on allies, 90% reduction, like no other. And with Energize helps keep the energy up so you can keep casting it on your sentinel. Your own sentinel is a little tricky. You got to kind of run backwards and kind of hit it at the right moment, but you can hit it and cast on it. That definitely helps keep your sentinel alive. Um, and then if you don't have the um, those arcanes, you can always throw on the shield variety because shield self regen. Uh, if you do have these shield ar arcanes and not the health, throw those on. If you don't, then you'll want to throw on um, uh, vital. Wow, draw a blank. Shield. Ah, there we go. Vigilante vigor instead of prime vigor because you'll have more regen per second of shields with that. Uh, even though capacity does help with that that helps even more and then the uh the guard that i've been running a whole bunch lately is this one this is built for the glass wall lots of armor lots of strength guardian brings up the armor even more and um if you use this with the Zenistar, you and some good primary secondary weapons you can hold down three interception points that's what this thing dominates interceptions you throw down a glass wall at one point has like i I believe it's like 22,000 effective HP when both you have energy conversion and arcane guardian both procced. And then you throw a Zenistar at another location and then your Warframe with your primary and secondary protect the third location. So three locations protected with one Warframe. Little to no frames I can think of that can do it uh, interceptions quite that well. Especially for quite as long too. Just like that. There are combos with different frames that you can do a team that can be great on its own, but as a standalone frame, this one does phenomenal. And with that little bit of health and a little bit of, uh, or having Arcane Grace on there, take advantage of that armor. It's phenomenal. All right, on to the next one. Saren. Cannot forget about Saren. Just absolutely cannot. Phenomenal frame. Absolutely phenomenal. Let's see if this is the right one. Yeah, all right, so this one, it really is critical to use the, oh, you know, I have to figure out what to put on the last one for that, Arcane. Um, so this one's absolutely critical that you have the Zenistar for this particular build because there's no duration whatsoever. So this one, you'll have just enough time to cast the malt, cast some spores on it, the Zenistar will prep them instantly, and then what I do is before the malt is gone, I cast the ultimate and just decimates the basically the entire map and with this one uh, I actually do have a fully maxed out fleeting expertise because I have a rank 2 blind rage now if you're saying oh hey repairman oh I don't have 300 days I don't have Zenistar I'm not that cool alright don't worry I got you covered non Zenistar build you're going to basically have prime continuity to offset the negative uh, effect of transient forward fleeting expertise that way your ability stays on for even longer, so that way you have time to throw out the malt, throw on like three spores, hack and slash with the melee, or throw a pox or something on it, and then before the timer runs out, go ahead and cast that ultimate. 
and do some devastating damage. Of course, the aurora, you can throw whatever aurora you want on there, different missions call for different things. It's four mud, so you can use whatever aurora you want for whatever gets tossed at you. You might not need particularly this uh, layout of forma. As you see, uh, this one has overcapacity on... Um, over capacity more than it's necessary uh, and this one has a little bit over uh, and if you had a non-matching one here and there this one would drop down from giving you seven capacity to five so your over capacity would be two instead of four so you don't need to actually with this if you form at the bottom just like this you don't need to form this just leave it at whatever it is check dash triangle doesn't matter you can put them on and it'll still fit because this one like seven drops down to five which means that seven also drops down to five extra capacity so you have extra wiggle room even still all right on to last but not least because these are of course remind you these are not in the not in any particular order just i happen to write them down in this order doesn't mean one's better than the other this is just the list i have for my top 10 Mesa, the Index Decimator, absolutely phenomenal for Index. So you got high strength, high duration, little bit of efficiency, and prime flow so that you got some buffer. Now I use Arcane Energize, particularly with this when I do Index, so that you can pick up an orb, fill up your energy really quickly, and then for more damage, I have velocity. You get that prox all the time because you're critting all the time uh, with the weapons I use anyways. And uh, just because I have all these other mods on there and I was dying, we we're dying a little bit too much. We me and some of my buddies, we talked about it and we tweaked the build with quick thinking onto it to make this both really powerful and survivable. Because you got quick thinking, prime flow, energizer, just doesn't uh, get better than that for, yeah, for doing index. Pistol Amp, boost up the damage even more. You could use Growing Power as well. Either one would do very well. Without some serious testing, hard to say which one do absolutely better, but so that's that. Um, hope you guys enjoyed that. That was my top 10 builds. If there's a particular frame that you want to see, post in the comments below. If uh, there's uh, Another style of video you guys want, post that as well. And until next time, keep those formos cooking.